Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 3 under the topic lead compensator. Before that, you will get a clear idea if you go through the procedure of how to solve a problem using lead network. I will give the link in the description. Kindly go through it. The problem is consider a unity feedback system with open loop transfer function g of s is equal to k by s into s plus 8. Design a lead compensator to meet the following specifications. So the first one is percentage overshoot is equal to 9.5. Natural frequency of oscillation is equal to 12 radians per second. And velocity error constant kV is greater than or equal to 10. Right. So the first step is to find the dominant pole SD. So how to find the dominant pole? Here we are given with the details of peak overshoot and omega n right so using these values we are going to find the value of dominant pole so the formula for dominant pole is given as sd is equal to minus zeta omega n plus or minus j omega n into root of 1 minus zeta square here the value of peak overshoot and omega n is given right so what is the formula for peak overshoot it is given by e power minus zeta pi divided by root of 1 minus zeta square into 100 so percentage mp is given by 9.5 percentage right so substitute the values here 9.5 and the remaining things so when you move this 100 to the left hand side, this value becomes 0 0.095 and the next step is we are going to take ln on both sides. So when you take ln on both sides, we are having the values like this, right? That is this exponential term will get cancelled. And the next step is squaring on both sides. So when you square on both sides, ln of 0 0.095 whole square is equal to this term, right? This term becomes zeta square pi square and when you take square root for this term this becomes 1 minus zeta square so the next step is just we are going to rearrange and find the value so here it is given like this and when you move this 1 minus zeta square to the left hand side our expression is like this the next step is we are going to multiply so after we are multiplying and we are rearranging the terms that is we are bringing the zeta terms together so here I am moving this term to the right hand side so that becomes plus right that is what I had written here and this 5.54 remains as such right. So here zeta square is common so I am taking it outside and I am further solving the problem and finally the value of zeta is found to be 0.6 right. Then the formula for dominant pole is minus zeta omega n plus or minus j omega n into root of 1 minus zeta square. So, we know the value of omega n, it is directly given in the problem. We had find out the value of zeta, right? So, just substitute the values and finally, we are getting the value of dominant pole as minus 7.2 plus or minus j 9.6, right? Then the step 2 is, we have to draw the pole 0 plot. That is, from the giver transfer function, we have to locate the poles and zeros. So, as we all know, poles are denoted by cross and zeros are denoted by circle and dominant poles are denoted as p right we use p to represent the dominant pole so this is our graph sheet right first we have to take the scale accordingly so uh, x-axis stands for real terms and y-axis stands for imaginary terms right so what is the value of dominant pole it is minus 7.2 right plus or minus j 9.6 here we are considering only the positive pole so the value is minus 7.2 plus j 9.6 so this is what i have marked here okay this is our dominant pole so it is denoted as p and the next thing is from the given problem what are the values of poles see here we will be having the value of poles as s equal to 0 and s equal to 8 Right, this is from the given problem. So, here just mark it. This is s equal to 0 and s equal to minus 8. Right, so this is our first procedure to complete on a graph sheet. Then the next step is we have to measure the angles from the poles to the respective dominant pole. Right, so here these are the poles and this is our dominant pole. Right, so the first step is we have to draw a line from this pole and this pole to this dominant pole. Right, 
So here I have drawn the lines as I said right from these two poles a line is drawn to this dominant pole P and just we have to draw a straight line like this I will explain you why right. So the next step is we have to measure the angles. So just mark the angles as this as theta 1 and this as theta 2 right. So how to find the values of theta 1 and theta 2 you see here theta 1 is given as 180 minus tan inverse of imaginary term divided by real term. So here first let me write the value of dominant pole. So 180 minus tan inverse of the imaginary value is 9.6 and the real term is 7.2 right. So just substitute the values and the value of theta 1 is 127 degrees and theta 2 since it lies in the second quadrant we have to take the values directly that is tan inverse of imaginary coefficient divided by real part. So 9.6 divided by so 9.6 divided by 0.8. So here why we are representing point 8 is that is you see here we are having that is the real part of our dominant pole right. So here we have to measure the distance between this point and our pole location. So here it is 7.2 and here it is 8 right. So 8 minus 7.2 gives you 0.8. So just substitute the values here and the value of theta 2 is found to be 85 degrees. So step 3 is to find the angle contributed by the lead network. So this is given by this formula, right? Pi is equal to sum of angles contributed by poles of the uncompensated system minus sum of angles contributed by the poles of uncompensated system. Sorry, here it is zeros, right? zeros of the uncompensated system plus or minus n into 180 degrees. So here the sum of angles contributed by poles is given by we are having two values right theta 1 plus theta 2. So 127 plus 85 degree gives 212 degrees. So here the value of pi is 212 degrees minus there are no zeros. So here it is 0 plus or minus n into 180 degrees. First we are considering the value of n as 1. So when you substitute the value of n as 1 the value of pi is found to be 32 degrees right. So here the next step is we have to measure the angle A, P and O, right. First we have to measure the angle then we have to divide that angle by 2, right. First let me measure. Right, so we are going to measure this angle. The value is found to be some 126 right so the value of angle is exactly that is the value of angle a p o is around 126 degrees right you, so just write it the next step is we have to divide this angle by 2 right so 126 divided by 2 will give you 63 degrees right so just mark the value of 63 over here So here lies our 63 right. So then the next thing is just connect this point right. So just draw a line from this dominant pole P through this point downwards in such a way that it meets our real axis. So here just draw a line right. So here we had measured our angle APO and we have divided that angle by 2 and just we have marked over here, right. So next we are proceeding with step 4 to find the pole and zero of the compensator. So draw a line AP parallel to X axis, we had already done this, right. So the bisector PC is drawn to bisect the angle APO, just we had measured the angle APO and we have here the bisect is nothing but we are going to divide that angle into 2. That is what we had done just now, right. So the angles CPD and BPC are constructed, okay. It is divided, right. Then here we have to mark the angles. You see here we are having the value of pi as 32 degrees, right. So again we are dividing this 32 degree into 2. 
So 32 by 2 gives you 16 degrees, right? Now we are going to mark this 16 degrees on a graph sheet. Listen carefully. You see, this is our bisector line, right? So this is our bisector line. And here now I am going to mark 16 degrees, right? I have to mark 16 degrees above this line and 16 degrees below this line. Just I have to mark the point, right? So as usual, so here first we will measure, right? So at this point I have to, wait a minute. So here, this is at 63, right? So I have to mark 16 degrees above as well as below. So first we will do the calculation, right? So 63 plus 16 will give, will give you 79, right? As well as 63 minus 16 will give you what? Here 13 and 5. So 6 means here it is 7 degrees and here it is 47, right? So, I have to mark 79 degrees as well as this 47 degrees. That's it. So, here I am marking this 79 degree as well as I am marking this 47. Right? Am I making the concept clear? Right? First, initially we had measured this A, P and O. Okay? This entire angle we had measured. And we have divide that angle by 2 and I have marked this point, right? After marking this point, we have find the value of pi as 32 degrees, right? So, again we are dividing that 32 into 2, sorry, 32 divided by 2. So, 32 by 2 gives you 16 degrees. So, we are considering this line as reference and I am marking that 16 degree above and as well as that 16 degree below, right? So, that is the thing what I have done here. Okay, since we are moving like this, that is in counterclockwise, uh, I had added, when we move before, we have to just subtract, okay? Th these are all the basic things I hope you people know well, right? Then the next thing is, again, I am going to draw a line from this point via this point and it should meet our real axis downwards, right? Wait, let me show you. So, you see here, we had finally drawn a line, right? So, okay, this is one line and this is the another line, right? And here, since we are designing the compensator, here first comes the zero. So, from the location of this point on the graph, I am writing the value of Zc as minus 9.1. And again, uh, from this point, it is Pc. So, Pc is given as minus 16.25, right? So, here no need to measure the things exactly even if you come with array with 16.1 it is right and here even if you come around 9 it is uh, right, okay. No need to be exactly, you should always have the same values as I have, right. So, here we have finally find out the values of poles and zeros and we are proceeding with the next step. So, finally our graph is looking like this, right? You should have a clear view, right? How it will be after finishing each and everything. So, uh, that's all. Hereafter, we won't take the graph again and again. We are going to proceed with the steps with our uh, notebook, right? So, here the step 5 is finding the transfer function of lead compensator. So, the transfer function of lead compensator is given by this formula, right? So, we know the value of 0 as well as the value of pole from the graph, right? So, here this 1 by t stands for 0 and this 1 by alpha t stands for pole. We know the values, so just substitute the values over here, right? So, this is the transfer function of our lead compensator. And step 6 is finding the open loop transfer function of the lead compensator system. As we all know, right, the lead compensator is always connected in series with the uh, forward path. So, here this is our given transfer function. We have designed a compensator and we have introduced the compensator in series with the given system, right. And uh, normally, we are always dealing with the unity feedback system. So, that is the reason why we have drawn the block diagram like this.
right how to find the open loop transfer function here we are having two blocks in series we just need to multiply right so once you start multiplying you see here we are getting the value of open loop transfer function as like this right and the next thing is sorry we are again we have to go back to our graph sheet we have to find the value of k right this is our open loop gain we are going to find the value so the formula is product of vector lengths from all poles to the dominant pole and product of vector lengths from all zeros to that dominant pole right so here the thing is we have to measure the length using the scale okay so here you see we are having how many poles and zeros 1 2 3 and 4 okay total 4 in number so just we are going to measure the length right that's it so l1 is here 12.15 just here i had followed the book right no need to be exactly 12.15 even if it is 12 it is okay right so the value of l1 and the value of l2 is 9.2 and l3 is 9.9 .9, and here this l4 is 13.3 right just we are measuring the length by using a scale from the poles and zeros to the dominant pole right am i making the things clear I hope so right then again we have to move back to our so here we are having totally three poles and only one zero right so just write the values now in the numerator we have to write the distances measured from poles so the values are l1 l2 and l4 you see here this pole this pole and this pole right the distance measured from this pole is this is marked as l1 and this is as l2 and from this pole is it is l4 right so here just write down the values right l1 l2 l4 divided by we are having only one zero and the distance is marked as l3 that's it just substitute the values and the value of k is found to be 150 right now substitute the value of this k in this open loop transfer function over here so finally the open loop transfer function is given by this expression right the next thing is check for the error requirement because this is given in the problem so the velocity error constant is given by the formula limit s tends to 0 s into g naught of s so s into the value of g naught of s we had just find out right just substitute the values here these two s terms cancels each other and the next step is substitute the value of s equal to 0 so when you substitute the value of s equal to 0 finally the value of kv is found out to be 10.5 right so the conclusion is the velocity error constant of the compensated system satisfies the error requirement that is this value is given in the problem what is the value which is given in the problem you see the value of kv should be greater than or equal to 10 and here the value of kv is found to be 10.5 right so this meets the requirement so finally we are concluding the value of result is the transfer function of lead compensator right the lead compensator is given by this expression so since this is not in the standard format usually we will write in the form of 1 plus some terms with s yes, right so here i am taking this 9.1 outside and here this 16.25 outside right so when you divide 9.1 by 16.25 the answer is 0 0.56 and 1 divided by 9.1 gives you 0 0.11 likewise 1 divided by 16.25 gives you 0 0.06 that's it right so finally we are ending up with this expression and the next one is transfer function of lead compensated system right so here this is our transfer function right of the compensated system so again as usual here in the numerator i am taking this 9.1 outside and here 8 and here 16.25 and by finally solving we are getting the value of this transfer function as like this right so here comes the end of the problem if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you